Yeah. What, what do you think are some of the bigger challenges in wildlife from what you've learned even as, as there's been a handover to your ministry now? Well, before it was uh, poaching, okay. uh, which, which I'm glad my team in, uh, in KWS and, uh, and the conservation sector have taken efforts and they're, they're, they're actually succeeding. Uh, the numbers are going down. Uh, 2017, uh, there were only 69 elephants who were, were killed. Mm. Uh, previously, it was 104 wow. in 2015. So you could see the decline. And I want to thank KWS and all the efforts of conservationists to, to, to curb this vice. Okay. And I'm sure that's something that you but want but to But also the biggest, the, bigger, the biggest achievement we did, uh, we ha what happened this year in 2018, was uh, the ban of ivory trade in China mm -hmm. and yes. Hong Kong. And thanks to our first lady, uh, Mama Margaret Kenyatta, uh, she really did a campaign of awareness internationally and managed to convince the world that this trade must stop. So Hong Kong did it uh, last, week, last week. First of January, it was China, and we mm -hmm. want to thank those two governments uh, for that support. Okay. We have some graphics. I'm not sure if they're ready. We want to talk about a report that was released last week. Uh, yeah. You are tweeting a bit about it quite a bit. And we want to understand not just what the graphics tell us, but what are the implications of this. So let's talk about total international arrivals. 2016, 1.34 million. 2017, 1.47 million. Despite two elections, two, two Supreme Court petitions, an increase of 9.8%. When you got these figures, what did that tell you as CS? Well, the biggest positive uh, effect that we found was security, the investment of security by the government. So never uh, touch wood, uh, Al-Shabaab <laughs> was curbed. Uh, despite we had our own disturbances, which are political, but in terms of major insecurity caused by terrorism, I think the government has done a lot and they have invested so much in stopping this vice. Uh, that's why we have been re resilient to have a 10% growth. Otherwise, if we didn't have two elections, we would have gone to almost 17, 18% more. And you know... You, you were hoping for 2 million tourists uh, if they had not been... We, we, wa we want to achieve uh, 2.5 million by 2022. Okay. It's, it's a gradual gain. It Almost cannot just double. over. Yes. yes. Uh, and this is our, our, our aim. And because you cannot just bring people and then the accommodation is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. And you are aware that our accommodation is a bit tired, particularly the cost. People now are investing in Masai Mara, so new products are coming in. Nairobi, there are new hotels. 4,200 new beds are already, some of them are ready in the market, some are now being developed mm -hmm. and in the next uh, in the next uh, three years we'll have up to five thousand uh, new beds so coming into, into the market that are being opened yes up. yes so it, okay security in 2017 may not have been an issue but of course a lot of tourists remember uh, the, the previous years what are you doing to in a sense alert the world that Kenya is a safe place again because the memories of old take some time before they can wear off and the travel advisories as well well it, it's very difficult to erase perception yes yeah, and that's the biggest challenge we are facing, and particularly we are in Africa. Perception in Paris is okay. And the problem of dub double standards, that when it happens in Paris or Belgium or, or Madrid, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Then we are being told, or New York, we are told, let's stand against, let's be in solidarity against <laughs> these evil forces. When it comes to Africa, then we issue travel, travel advisories, we give all sorts of, of, of warnings. It's so much, uh, so, so sad. But the double standard is the, what is, is hitting us. But people, when they come to Kenya, they are convinced Kenya is a safe country. And the government has invested heavily in security and infrastructure. That's why there's so much progress in the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. For example, the SGR, you think is a political agenda? We are the biggest beneficiaries in tourism for SGR, and particularly the domestic uh, market. Okay. I'm coming to SGR because that's a topic we'll actually discuss o on its own. Can we look at the next graphic? Uh, just briefly taking uh, uh, Kenyans through uh, the report that was released last week. Uh, the data from Kenya Tourism Board 2017, I believe we do have uh, stats. Okay. So let's look at beds per night, and, and you alluded to this uh, quite, um, you know, in, as part of your thoughts. Yeah. 3.5 million beds per night. 4.05 million beds per night in uh, 2017. So that's, what, 600, 500, 600,000 uh, extra beds, yeah. or at least uh, extra beds that were occupied, occupied in 2017. Yes. Yes. Can we look at the, the next one as well, just so that um, we can then get a general reaction uh, from CS here about that? Okay. No, that's not the one. Okay. 
Uh, well, we'll okay, we'll, we'll put them up when we can. Okay. So also in terms of revenue, money, money that came in, yeah. uh, maybe I can get your comments on that as well. We have seen an increase in the revenue that came in last year, again, despite everything that happened, despite the you know, critics saying that Kenya surely cannot do better in 2017 than it did in 2016. Why are you surprised as yes, when the numbers came in? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. You can say that confidently. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we have reached 1.2 billion. Our target originally was we want to have 3 million uh, arrivals and 200 billion revenue. But because of Westgate and because of the Garissa attack mm -hmm. and because of our prolonged election, we have not achieved that. But the 1.2 billion dollars that we have received, 120 billion Kenya shillings, is because when clients come into Kenya, there are more activities just sitting in the hotels. Mm -hmm in their bedrooms, in their hotels. So there are restaurants coming up, there are activities coming up, and that has made people spend more money. And that's why you have seen a growth of the revenue by 20%. Okay. Um, I want to um, uh, read for you a quote by Jimmy Karaoke, the chairperson of KTB, yesterday in a meeting that you are also present in. He said, and I quote, he confessed that Kenya was supposed to achieve 3 million visitors by 2012. He also said that the strategies that we are applying as a destination are not yet yielding the results we had hoped for. He ends by saying that we are very far from the targets we had set. Let's talk a bit about that. I know, and, and, and again, no one takes away from the fact that tourism has grown. And if you just Google tourism in Kenya, you can see all the articles, both locally and internationally. But Jimmy Karaoke, Kenya Tourism Board says, wait a minute, uh, let's not get too excited. There's still a lot more that needs to be done. There are targets that need to be hit or at least uh, reached. Uh, talk to us about that. We cannot do business as usual. Uh, what, is bu what is business as usual? Business as usual, you think if you go to advertise, you put on billboards or you put on <laughs> newspapers or on televisions. That does not take place anymore in today's uh, market. First, we have the millennials. New clientele comes in. They are, they, are, they are walking and working from their smartphone. So they are not going to watch news. They are not going to read newspapers. Yeah, from the print newspapers. I hope They're some of them watch news. Otherwise, what, what are well, <laughs> this one will go digital. That's oh, this one will go watch. digital, yes, so exactly. they watch. Okay, keep exactly. uh, that. Was and then they'll not re, uh, re, uh, look at uh, billboards. <laughs> but if we invest in digital marketing, mm -hmm. and this is what I have been pushing uh, Kenya Tourism Board, that we cannot do business as usual. The same way we did 15 years ago. We are not getting new results. We are getting the same results. But we'll be talking about this two million, three million, mm. it's only one million. Every day we uh, comes in one million. And we have invested a lot of money in Kenya Tourism Board. But now we have employed an, a consultant on digital marketing. Okay. We are now concentrating on digital marketing and helping our clients, who our, our investors here, local investors, that you cannot say you have a website and then tourists will come to you. No. It's not you, magic. You, you must be in, in the digital platforms. You must be active. You must be price conscious. Whenever you see the, the, your rooms are not occupied, you need to be pro, uh, proactive into the dynamics of improving your price so that people can come in. So these are the things we are teaching the industry. And that's why we are investing heavily in the digital mm -hmm. platform and digital marketing so that we can be able to gain those numbers. Because those clients we used to receive 20 years ago, they're not the same clients today. Millennials are 25% of the global population. So they have the money, they have no time, they're impatient, and they go and choose uh, uh, and select your destination from the internet. 79% of the bookings in Kenya is via the digital platform. Wow, yeah. eight out of 10. Yes, Pretty so, so they're, they're not interested in you printing a magazine. Or, or going to, to nation newspapers. No, they are not going to book. And I'm talking about not only international, even the domestic market. You see the domestic market that have, have raised by 500,000 uh, bed nights, yeah? is because of their own initiatives. Yeah, Tembea Kenya with Maina Kegeni, uh, the other turn up uh, uh, two operators. These are local indigenous people. A lot of them are working people. with influencers. To, yeah, you know. influencers with bloggers. Yes. They go themselves and take trips as a group. And they're the ones who are opening the country for us. Mm. And that is the way of marketing Kenya, not the, the conventional way we used are to we, do. Are we late in adopting no, this? No, no, or no, is no, this no, the right not, time? We, we, are, we are on time. It's only to make, not only tourism board to do it, but the whole sector okay. must, they, they must not be experts, 
but they must appreciate technology is the key for their business. Well, they say change is one of the hardest things. I hope they are listening, even <laughs> as you talk about this. Yesterday, again, I, I believe it was yesterday, Dr. Julius uh, Kipnetich also uh, seems to propose uh, that tourism should join President Uri Kenyatta's big four pillars to make them the big five, and of course, talking about the big five wildlife. Uh, and he gave some statistics that for every 10 tourists that come to Kenya, one job is created. Yeah then tourism could ideally become a greater force for employment, and he was comparing tourism with manufacturing or agriculture. Let's get, let's get your thoughts on that as well. I know uh, the job creation for President Uru Kenyatta's focus Talk to us about how tourism can aid with that. And if it is true that for every 10 tourists, one job is greater, then, then, then clearly there used to be a focus there. For, oh, for sure. But you see, the focus was President Uru Kenyatta has put in uh, under, under four. One is affordable houses, yes. uh, universal health care, nutrition and agriculture and food security, manufacturing. So you see manufacturing is the last point, is job creation. Why we did the job creation? So it goes around with everybody else. We are linked in all that. Mm. A healthy population, productivity is high. We are linked with food for security, a yeah, healthy population again, but also we need our agricultural industry depends on tourism. Manufacturing value addition depends on tourism as a consumer. So we are cutting across. We don't necessarily have to have to, be, to feel that we are, we are recognized. No, we are across the board. And then here, President Hurukin, to my understanding, mm -hmm. government will always be government and will always do the same things and probably get no results. He That's decided, a very honest statement to of make. Of course, <laughs> that is government. But he decided to focus on four key issues on the people, and that is, that is having them health, health, universal health, on the people again, affordable housing, yeah, on the people again, nutrition, and affordable food, on the people again, jobs. So we are the people, we are among the people who are going to create jobs also in, uh, to the people of Kenya. So I understand, we always like to be very traditional. <laughs> it has to be big five. No, it can be big four. And we can still be part of the mainstream okay. of the agenda. Okay, okay, interesting thoughts that you bring in. Um, again, as I said, uh, when you Google tourism in Kenya, a lot of positivity coming out, whether globe, locally or internationally. But some local operators still feel that more can be done. Some have concerns about the state of our roads, uh, whether it's, uh, and again, this is out, you know, sort of beyond your ministry, so we could talk about partnerships mm -hmm. shortly. Mm -hmm. State of the roads, some are talking about Narok, Masai Mara, uh, Diani, uh, you know, forcing tourists to have to go onto the ferry, you know, about the traffic jam there, instead of creating better alternative routes. Um, others are complaining about beach boys in Mombasa who will follow tourists for 10 minutes and the tourist just feels, hey, this is too much. I'm going back to the hotel. Uh, and, and of course, the state of hotels, which you mentioned. And finally, at parks, you can find on 24th of December at Amboseli, you spend an hour and a half at the park gate before you can get in for an hour's drive. What is your ministry doing to tackle this? Are you getting feedback from tourists? And how are you handling that feedback? What I'm glad now, we have a coordinated system in government. So I chair the interagency uh, council, mm -hmm. which all the enablers of tourism sit on the table, and I chair that meeting, from roads to environment to health uh, to security. So that is now coordinated, and it started this year. Under one body. Under, under my chairmanship. So they're all government co uh, enablers, and they're the ones who are listening how to realign their services to tourism, because it's a vital uh, sector. Roads to Sekenani, that is under construction as we are talking about. Roads to Salagate from Malindi, it's under construction. Mm -hmm. Roads from uh, Taru and Samburu going to, 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 to Kwale and to Diani eventually as a bypass from, from the Mombasa Highway, it's under construction as we are talking about. So there's a lot of investment already been done. In the next 12 months to 18 months, you'll see these roads ready. So that is being addressed now. The issue mm -hmm. of security, you are aware, that's why the resilience of numbers. So we have the positive effect mm -hmm. on it. Issues of beach boys. Now KWS now is under tourism. In fact, next week I'm having a meeting with the department from the coast region, KWS, going to brief me and de developing a strategy to address the issue of beach boys. What, what, what are the potential solutions? Because these beach boys also need work. So 
So it's sort of a catch-22. So the solution is not about kicking out people from, uh, from the beach. It's about coordinating, organizing them, managing them. And the people must understand, if they want to get business from that tourist, mm -hmm. being local or international, they must have a code of conduct. And that's what we're going to implement. Okay. You, you praised SGR and what it's done for Mombasa. And if you speak to two operators, I mean, they've come up with packages where SGR plus three nights will cost you this amount of money. But there are those who are concerned that in 2018, if fares are increased, and with the ticketing challenges that you have to book online, I don't know, by midnight, or you might not get a ticket, that it might scare away some tourists. Again, is that something that, that you are discussing in that sort of interagency forum? I, I, think, I think SGR is a brilliant uh, infrastructure project that the government has brought, and it benefits the sector. How do we manage SGR? We have our own challenges, and then this, this old-fashioned way of managing SGR from no portal to you book seven days before, <laughs> that is rubbish. For me, that is rubbish. Why can't we have a portal like Kenya Airways? You can book one year in advance. What's so magical about SGR? It's the same mode of transport like, like uh, Kenya Airways and like any other airlines. So, so this, this is your Kali way of managing things. Yeah, this is, must stop. And I'm working with uh, Masharia. Masharia has put a team. I hope you've told him those same things that no, you've... No, no, no. These are internal you... issues. Okay, yeah. okay. Go but but the, the, I cannot hide them. These are frustrations by the public. Because you get that feedback. Yeah, I get... I'm the one who... I'm the one who handles the clients. Yeah, I don't handle the hardware. I handle the people. So all those complaints come to me. So we have worked with CS Masharia. We have worked with the uh, CS uh, Jomusheru. So there is going to be a solution very soon on the issue of portal, the bookings, everything else. And we hope we can have also dedicated uh, uh, wagons where people, if they want luxury or additional services, mm -hmm. they can be able to get also from the SGR. Okay. On, on, on the same note, uh in terms of collaboration with other ministries, because we're still on that as well, how do you collaborate with other ministries to broaden the tourism um, opportunities available in Kenya? For example, partnering with health ministry to have health tourism or, or sports ministry to have uh, international tournaments coming here. What's the plan for the next five years in regards to that, so that Kenya can offer more than beaches and safaris? Well, first of all, uh, Kenya has more than just beaches of safaris, but our core business is beach and safari. Mm -hmm. So we need first to refresh and fix what we have as a core business. And then go to what opportunities are there. Okay. there there's budding, there's sports tourism, like paragliding and, and skydiving. All those are avenues. And then there is tools we can use to market Kenya. For example, mega events uh, like uh, a cultural festival, like the FIFA football in South Africa. That was a mega event. How do we bring events in Kenya or conferences in Kenya that will be able to be used as a platform mm -hmm. to bring and to market Kenya. But also opportunities of using athletes as again as means to market and promote our destination. So we have a whole strategy of sports tourism. How do you but remember sports is not tourism. It's only a tool we are going to use to market the destination. So we want to use I told you about flowers, Valentine's why can't the Flower Council organize a huge festival on, on flowers? And because we are the largest growers of flowers in the world, bring the world to Nairobi, to Nairobi. or Naivasha, not even Nairobi. Send them to Naivasha. These are the things that we need to coordinate together and, and make it happen. So, so we are going to do all that, and uh, we, are, we are committed. And there are opportunities. So, so we said yes. But now the new sports are coming in uh, because clients, when they come to Kenya, Sometimes they are lost and they're bored. Because either they spend five, six hours driving in a national park looking for animals. <laughs> that you might not find, no, depending no, on the no, time no. of day. In, in Kenya, this is the only country that you can find. That you will find. You will find. You might not find all the big five, but you can, not, you can find the big four of Uhuru Kenyatta. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plug. Okay, keep going. <laughs> So, so maybe you might not see a leopard, but you might see an elephant, a buffalo, a lion, yeah? Maybe more than what you expected. And also the numbers are much more. So th that is definitely guaranteed over and But to spend six hours in the whole day in sun with a vehicle has no air condition, mm -hmm. yeah, with no internet, then that young millennial feels, I don't belong here. But now I'm telling the industry, 
if matatus have internet, why can the tour buses have internet? Yeah? Why can't we make it more comfortable to make it air conditioned? Mm -hmm. So that in that heat, because these people are not used to the heat, yeah? so make it comfortable so that people, that six hours can be seen to be not a burden for a tourist coming to waste their time here. They will see you. How, how many times will you see an, a, a, an, an animal? Once, twice, not six, seven hours. So that time is we are trying to be more innovative. What, what, can, we, what else what can you give them to yeah, do yeah. as they as they, Especially as the, the millennials, the, the, yes. the new generation. But, but these are the things we're discussing with the industry, and they are very positive. And I hope they'll be able to invest in such technologies. Okay. Yeah. Your thoughts on the state of tourism, specifically in Malindi, long known as a, a place where Italians would take direct flights from Italy or, or, from, or, or Europeans would come straight to Malindi. But last year, we know that tourism there hit rock bottom. I even have a quote here. The Kenya Association of Hoteliers in Keteras, Kilifi County Chairman Philip Chai, quoted as saying, in Malindi, hotels have been hit by international tourist drought. Uh, top seat wrangles elections have uh, you know, adversely affected the industry uh, they had warned that some hotels might be closed down if business does not improve soon worrying news well uh, Malini has suffered it's unfortunate yeah uh, but uh, many reasons not just uh, not just one thing you know it's easy to sit down and say I have no airport in Malindi and that's why I have no clients but there has never been an airport in Malindi for the last 30 years and you had clients the product is tired guys you need to invest in the product. You need to invest in human resources in your hotels. Don't bring somebody from the village and you think they'll start serving, serving a foreigner. You must take him through training. Yeah? So people have gone on your Kali way of managing. And they think now they have to blame the government. There's no airport. It has never been an airport. Although the government is going to invest in the airport. We are working on the, on, on, the, on the scorters. We have invested almost half a billion Kenya shillings to pay them out. So it takes time. It's not overnight. So people are sitting somewhere, and they think everything is to blame. But then they don't want to blame themselves. Reflect and look inside and say, yes, there has never been an airport, but there's a better road from Mombasa to Nairobi. It might be busy, but a better road. There are more roads now coming out from Malindi, going to Savo, going to Mariakani, it's more easier. Going to SGR from Malindi is easier. What are you Although there's still that stretch that some of them are... And I know you've gotten these complaints, yes. SCS, but, but, that but, Malindi's, uh, Mombasa has benefited greatly from SGR, but not Malindi. You'll be surprised. It's easier to come from, uh, from, uh, from Malindi via Mar uh, Mavweni, SGR to, to, to Mariakani, and board your train to Mombasa. But be innovative. Station buses in Mariakani. Mm. Make packages for them to be appropriate. You want to charge the same rates of international clients, uh, yeah, very, very high, and then you want to get 10 people. They will not come. You, do, you don't want to invest in marketing. Invest in marketing. I don't say Malindi is not suffering. Malindi is suffering. But not all the reasons is the airport. Not all the reasons are just problems by others. Why don't you sit down, reflect, look inside, and say, maybe if I do this in my hotel, it will make a difference. Okay. And a few people who did that, they are now benefiting from Malindi. And Malindi has done much better this year in December. Than, than it did than in the previous, previous years. Okay. Yes, yes. And, it, and it has been a long-term problem. We have a few thoughts about the state of the tourism industry from uh, a tourist stakeholders in Diani, Kuala County. Let's listen to what they had to say about uh, tourism in Kenya. Well, uh, we are coming live from Diani here in Kwale County. Diani being a bedrock of tourism in the country and even across the world after Diani Beach was voted one of the best beach uh, in Africa by World Travel Awards. And we know that in the month of December, uh, tourists uh, from across the world flooded our hotels here uh, due uh, to maybe uh, an intensive marketing that was done by the government. And even some of the uh, businessmen that are depending on uh, tourism here at the coastal town uh, are saying that uh, at least as right now they are seeing uh, somehow the numbers of tourists visiting uh, Diani are, are good. Makauna makajana kidoko hii kazi ya utalii imeimarika kwa imeimarika. Waziri Balala amefanya fanya mambo mazuri. Utalii sasa hii ukianku utalii sasa hii mahali umefikia kidogo ameanza kumix wale wageni wa kutoka nchi kama za South America, Colombia, Uruguay.
kidogo kidogo tunawaona na wanaingia kwa manduka wanatufanyia biashara. Kwa hivyo sisi tunashukuru kwa upande wetu wake nasema amefanya bidii sana. Uh, Kenya tunataka mtu ametolea kama barala kwa maana sisi mali tunakulia tunaona kweli amefanya vizuri. Kutoka Desemba kufikia sasa kazi imekuwa at least imepanda kidogo imeingia watalii ingawaje watalii ambao unategemea vizuri ambao ni watalii orange ni ma british some of the business people here at the coastal town claim that political temperatures have really affected the tourism sector here in Guyana and even at the coastal town but however their urge to the government is to ex do extensive marketing to countries such as Britain, France and even uh, United States of America to ensure that uh, tourists flood our hotels and even other places here in the country. Tangu 07 hapa biashara imekuwa chini. Lakini kuanzia mwaka jana wageni walikuwa wameanza kurudi na after election wageni wameenda. Sasa tunaona ni kwa sababu ya election. Sasa ile kitu anaweza ongeza ongeza ni inji kama Germany Ufaransa na inji za England hivyo kidogo kidogo tu aende huko atangaze manake waingilizi zamani walikuwa wanakuja lakini saa hii hatuwaoni wengi sana wale tunaona ni kidogo lakini kidogo zile nchi zingine ambazo zilikuwa zikuji Kenya wageni walikuwa kuji Kenya saa hii tunawaona lakini Germany England France kidogo kidogo aende huko aongee aongee nao tuone kama anaweza kuja Kenya British ni wazungu ambao ambao wanakuwa na pesa wanapenda biashara Hmm. lakini wazungu kama Poland ni wageni lakini hawana pesa ona biashara zao ni 10 dola ona lakini ma british tungeomba ingawa ingewezekana balala na wale wengine na usika waongee na ma british british eh, waongee na british government at least atuletee ma british kama wakata ma british ilipokuwa Kenya mambo yalikuwa mazuri their urge to the government is to have a stakeholders meeting with the hoteliers so that they can reduce the rates uh, to promote uh, the domestic uh, tourists. Kama hapa nilipo, niko opposite Swahili Beach Hotel. Na watu wengi wakutoka Nairobi wanapenda hapa mahali sana. So, nimepata exposure kubwa over the few years. Tangu watu walipo embrace kuja ku, kufanya tourism. Hile kuja kutembea hapa. Uh, Mombasa, apa. Sasa chenye serikali inafaa ifanye ni iteremushe ile ile mabase zingine wanalalamika kwa ile mahoteli ya kongali kidogo wapunguza fuguse kidogo ndio wakuja kwa wingi Domestic tourists wa ao ok wako lakini is only wanasaidia wenye mahoteli wenye mahoteli ndio wanapata faida kwa chile wajama wana kulapale kila kitu wano lakini siki wafanya biyashara kama sisi domestic customers they can make any business Nikunua lesson na nua lesson 500 600 bas. Okay. Masanamu anunui sanamu. So what are you going to do? Hoteliers are optimistic for this year 2018 that business will be good after political temperatures have gone down. We are however optimistic that now uh, with the elections behind us and the fact that we now have a president, we are able to restore confidence in our main tourist markets. Uh, we project a busy 2018 uh, based on the stability that the, current, that the country will now be facing and we hope for the best. Well, uh, that's all we have for now. Back to you in studio. Thank you so much. Very interesting thoughts there. We have some stats that again were released uh, last week, I believe, that we can put up. Okay, so this is in terms of arrivals by region. Europe, 36%. Uh, Africa, 29%, Americas, 15%, Asia, 15%, Middle East, 3%, and Oceania, uh, 2%. Um, some of the operators, they are saying they're not seeing as many people from Europe as before, but clearly the stats show that they're still coming in, but maybe not in as large a number as they used to in the past. Maybe you can tell us uh, well, uh, what's be, what, what the trends are. Before, we were just focused on, uh, we have not diversified our market. Now we have diversified our market. Uh, they're used to particular British and the Germans. Those were mainly coming by charters. Charters are no longer there. The charter business in the world is declining. 
Now it's low cost airlines coming in mm -hmm. and also scheduled airlines have become very dynamic in pricing. So now more people come with scheduled airlines and low cost airlines rather of charter. So the, the, the only people who I see, they're used to that tradition. And we have diversified. We have also diversified to the American market. But also most of the people are not going to come back to Mombasa and to Diani when the hotels are old and tired. The only new hotel probably we can say is Swahili Beach, which is built recently, that is 10 years ago. So if it's so all the, 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 years the, the, ago. the newest hotel is Swahili Beach, which is 10 years ago, then you could understand the product is tired and clients are not going to come with old tired products. That's why it's easy to blame government, to blame roads, to blame this or that. But you yourself, you don't take initiative to improve your business. I know it's a hard investment, yeah, and you'll only invest when you see there's a future. But also we have been investing in marketing tourism, investing in infrastructure for the last five years. So, so this time we want the, the, business, the investors to start investing in refurbishing their hotels. So I, ca I, ca I can understand what the Diani guys are feeling. Uh, Poland is a new market we have introduced. They have two charters coming into, in, into Mombasa. So that at least fills the gap of the others who have not been coming. But we are, we are, we are, we are, we are trying to market to other destinations, so be able to come into, into well, the what, business. What are we going to do about Middle East? They are 3% in terms of distance. They're not too far off in terms of products and, and what we can offer them. Clearly, there's a lot, but 3% shows that a lot needs to be done. And when you posted the tweet, I saw a lot of people coming in and saying, hey, Middle East, we need to do this. We need to do that to attract more tourists from that region. You know, when we said Middle East, is the Arab market. There's a lot of Germans and, and, and British and all of them coming from the experts from Dubai. So ah. because there are almost f over 40 flights a week from Dubai into Nairobi. But they are classified. So they are classified as their nationality, okay. not as the where they are coming from. So when you see at 3%, these are the Arab speaking. Arab speaking are different type of taste they have. They want to go to Malaysia. They want to go with families, feel secured. They want, to, because Malaysia also offers Islamic uh, products. They want to go to Europe probably for, fi uh, for, for, for high life and spending. So it's only slowly they are coming to appreciate nature and this spectacular what we have of the safari. So the, that's why the number is only 3%. But uh, truly speaking, most of these flights which are coming via, uh, via, via the Middle East coming into Nairobi, mm -hmm. also majority of them are not Middle Easterns. They are not the Arab market. And then, of course, they're classified according to their yeah, nationalities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is clear that between what, between 2007 and two years ago, clearly Kenya lost a lot of the traditional tourists that used to come here. And by lost, it means they went to other destinations instead of coming to Kenya. And some feel that they went to Tanzania. We have seen an increase in the number of tourists going to Tanzania. In fact, some Tanzanian uh, magazines are reporting that they are the new big boy in East Africa, that they are the tourist hub in East Africa, and one magazine even said that they've overtaken Kenya. But of course, there are disputes about how they calculate their numbers as well. I want to get your thoughts on that and on whether, again, if you're warning hoteliers, if you don't change, then we are going to lose these people to, to Tanzania. The truth of the matter, we, we have lost to Tanzania. That's the truth of the matter. Because we assume God-given product, and we are not innovative, and we don't invest, and we think people will come, nobody will come. Nobody will come, let me guarantee you. Oh, because I have Lake Victoria, people will come to see it? No. You need to package Lake Victoria. You need to package the beach. You need to package the animals for people to come to see them. If you think you're just putting them like that, they will not come. As simple as that. What, what are Tanzania doing differently? What have they done while we were trying to sort our, our security challenges and, and, and everything else? The biggest challenge that we have was the security. And that's why it was perceived to be safer to be in Tanzania. They are not closer to Somalia. That's another bad image is because of our, our border with Somalia. Tanzania does not have, Uganda doesn't, doesn't have that, that border. Then the second thing is that you, Tanzania is a new kid in the block. So all their hotels are fresh and new and modern. All our hotels, majority of our hotels are 40 years old. People are not going to come to 40 year old hotels. If you have not refurbished, that's why Mombasa has, has I've just come from uh, Zanzibar two days ago. Every hotel, every second hotel in, in Zanzibar is brand new. 
In Zanzibar Stone Town, we have Park Hyatt, brand new, Double Tree, brand new, and this is downtown uh, Stone Town. Yeah, apart Equivalent from to Old Town Mombasa. Yes. Yes. Apart from, from uh, from the East Coast and the North Coast. Yeah. Look at Mombasa. Show me one international brand in Mombasa. None. None. So how would people come when you don't have international brands? When you don't have uh, f a fresh new hotels? Look at Nairobi. Now people come to Nairobi. There's Kapinski. There's Moven Peak. I'm going to open it soon. Yeah, there is uh, 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 f uh, f four points Sheraton at the airport. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open it soon. Yeah, now there's Hemingways in Watam, which has brand new. You'll see now people. So we, we are it. making progress. Well, you're posing a challenge to the hoteliers, but they are not here. You're the one who's here, so I, I'm going to be. No, no. Uh, I, 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 I think we have engaged with the hoteliers. Okay. Uh, yesterday we had a good meeting, and we have actually taken them through what the world is doing. Okay. Rather and, and, and of just business as usual. So while, while, I ask you this because while, you know, okay, so while hoteliers work on upping their game, uh, so to speak, what is government doing to continue sensitizing the, the sector that if we are not careful, while, while we are growing our numbers, and that's not uh, a fact that anyone's disputing, the world is moving on. And, you know, some could even ask, when you talk about 4 million tourists as, as a target, could that be a low target? Could we be aiming higher as well? Let me, let me get your thoughts on that. We have, we have all the, you know, it's easy to just put figures up and say, I want 10 million, I want this million, without a strategy. We have done a strategy to get to 4 million, uh, to 2.5 million by 2022. Yeah, and then eventually four million. So we want the numbers to come the same way we see the number of rooms and investment in the hotel industry coming. And it's not people are not coming because they are coming with a ho for a hotel bed. They want activities around their, their 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 vacation. So they want an experience. They don't want to come to the airport and be frustrated by a, a migration officer, mm -hmm. being harassed by a custom officer being conned by a taxi driver and when when the person reaches to this beautiful hotel at the, uh, in town the guy is thinking to go back and this is an experience that everybody is fighting to improve that's why government is in, in is, is is trying to improve the experience at the airport so everybody in the value chain must participate in being the ambassador of tourism. Okay. And it's, it's interesting, you've mentioned the airport. I'm sure you saw this complaint. It was tweeted and, and you yeah, attacked it as well. Uh, you, come, you come in from Europe, you find that um, uh, local arrivals terminal, East African arrivals terminal, or at least the desk where you're supposed to be cleared at customs, there's like two people, and then you know, they go through. But international arrivals, at least that particular desk, there's a long line, nobody else is there. You took a tour there recently with other uh, CSs. What's going to happen about that? We have a 100 days uh, plan. And we have signed an MOU between the three ministries. Although some of the 100 days have lapsed already. Not yet, not yet. Okay. We've, we've just started uh, 10 days ago. We okay. signed an MOU 10 days ago. So we, we did a, a 100 days plan. So there's training of the, of the staff at the airport. There is improvement of signage. There is, there is also uh, time management in terms of the clients coming through immigration and in customs. So all this, we have, we have a, 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 a framework where the CEO of Kenya Airport Authority will be in charge and he must deliver. I saw that tweet in the, in, on the weekend. Yes. I immediately forwarded to him. What do you mean by deliver? What, what is ideal? Ideal is... Uh, what success, like, you know? Ideal is a client comes in and we've all traveled all over the world. I travel all over the world. It takes two minutes to be cleared from immigration. Even if they accuse, they see many counters open and everybody is busy and there's a supervisor. And there's a and sense there is, of urgency. And there is somebody you know. directing you where to stand. Exactly. So that feeling of service is lacking at Jomo Kenyatta Airport. But I came on Sunday, I saw there was a lady taking people different points. So uh, there has been an improvement. Yeah? I see when you have an e-visa, it's actually 30 seconds. When you have a manual visa, mm -hmm. it takes nine, maybe up to five minutes because there's all this paper, uh, manual things to be done. So then we are separating the counters, and that's exactly what we do. Secondly, customs. I have never been in anywhere I've traveled in the world that somebody has opened my bag. Never. Yeah? I might come with a perfume in my bag. I can come with a brand new laptop in my bag. Nobody. 
as far as I don't carry the most uh, dangerous items, the prohibited yeah, ones, mm -hmm. then, and maybe somebody randomly will just stop you. How are you? What are you uh, where are you going? What is in your bag? Casually, randomly they ask you, but they have never opened my bag. Why here in Kenya? That's, a, that's what we ask. Why you. here in Kenya? Why do, why do yeah. why people get harassed and in not, the And not only that, let me tell you, if they see a um, Mzungu from Europe, they don't touch him. When they see a Chinese, my God, Chinese are the biggest victims. They Kenya are harassed. Kenya, they are harassed. Second people who are harassed is a Kenyan. The Kenyan has become a criminal to travel. So they know a Kenya will come with Zawadi because we are, we are family people. Will come with my children, uh, daughters, uh, maybe something. Will come with my wife. This, yeah. Now you're being harassed. Are you promising that this will end, or are you hoping? You know, what are you giving? We in have terms measures. Of we have measures, and everybody has signed, including KRA, including immigration, mm -hmm. including security. Everybody has signed to this charter. So if somebody does not uh, perform, there's a hierarchy of accountability, and that CEO must explain to us why this service is not working. It's going to take a bit of time. Let's Longer look at than the 100 thing. days. Well, we want to see results, at least some results in 100 days, but I know it's a bigger thing because it's not about just the service, but also it's the infrastructure. Is it conducive? If we want queues to be reduced, why don't we have more counters? So the space is a challenge. Why don't we have electronic? Why don't we just go there and put your passport and just do yourself the camera mm -hmm. uh, picture? and just walk in, especially for Kenyans. That would be easy, you don't need human beings to do that. And these are simple equipment, you can get them very cheap uh, through procurement. Fair enough. What is the government doing to promote inter-county um, tourism? We have seen countries like the United States, they don't rely too much on, on um, tourists from other countries. They sufficiently sort out their tourism sector internally. Well, uh, we, we held a meeting with the county, county executive uh, committee members CECs uh, for tourism and also Governor Tunai who has been a great help through the Council of Governors. So first of all what we want to do is uh, do mapping of the product, of the assets. I want every county to identify two products that can be sellable to tourism. And then you don't just come to us and tell us I have this lake, come and sell it. No, 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 no. You need to package that product make it conducive so that we can tell you now it is ready to be sold, we will now put it in our packaging uh, in, 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 and, and promote it. But you cannot just tell me, oh, we have the beach, come and sell it. Give incentive for investors to come and build lodges, give incentive to investors to come and build hotels, put infrastructure, give security, yeah? make sure the environment is managed well, yeah? and pollution and, and all these pl plastic bags, I can tell you people will start coming to the counties. And, and truly speaking, the national government does not own any, any product. The products are owned by the counties. So you, it's their so we are encouraging them. It's their responsibility, but we have to help them out to develop products on the ground. When we talk about the transit points back at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, statistics show that, what, 10 million people pass through uh, those uh, gates seven, at least? Seven million. About 7 million people. What can we do with that number in terms of getting them to spend a couple of days at, you know, at our beach or, or at the National Park or even in Nairobi? You know, at least they can leave some money there. You know, Nairobi is, a, is an airline hub. So not all of them will come to Nairobi. So, so a few of them will come to Nairobi, which is almost a million point five. Mm -hmm that are coming to Nairobi, uh, the rest are transit. So we are saying that if anybody has maybe a six hour transit time, can we give them a free visa to come into Nairobi National Park or Nairobi City for shopping? Mm -hmm. So those arrangements are being done. But now the president has even gone much more ahead than us. He said every African coming to Kenya, he must receive a visa at the airport. So it's not a reason that you are sitting at the airport and you have no visa to enter the country. Before that was the case, you can spend even 12 hours waiting for your uh, plane, but you are waiting at the airport on a seat. So those are the things now, the new dynamics. That's why we feel that we'll have a bigger number percentage for African travelers to come to Kenya. I don't want to get away from wildlife because that is now under your docket. In early January, Kajiado Governor Joseph Olelenku warned KWS, get stray elephants out of the Maasai's farm. 
He also said that KWS does not have an option. He, and he said this, and I'm quoting, I'm giving them two days to drive the elephants from our farm, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, failure of which my people will defend themselves because the elephants have left a trail of destruction. How is this then going to work? We're trying to encourage Troyes to get here. The elephants need to be taken care of, but some of the landowners, they are saying these elephants are eating our food. They have become a menace. What are you going to do because this is now squarely under your docket? Well, one, one of the biggest challenges before was poaching. Now that has been managed. Now the next biggest challenge that I'm having is human-wildlife conflict. So there'll be conflict of animals going into people's farms, destroying, people will complain. There'll be animals going and killing people, mm -hmm. yeah? But you see, it's easy to put a blame like that. But it is us humans who have occupied the animal's land. The corridors, we have blocked them. Out of just expansion of human development and activities. So we are going to have a clear strategy how to address those issues. Are you going to engage people like the, C like I will the, the governor? I will engage all stakeholders in this and also all the people who are directly in, uh, connected to, to the human wildlife conflict, conservation is included. But it's the biggest agenda I have and Kenya has to address those issues because we need these animals as our, our heritage. You know, it's easy to stand and be frustrated when you see your person has died or your crops have been destroyed. Let's be more sober and say, listen, this is a challenge we are facing. Let's together come and work together. So no ultimatums, no, 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 no retaliation is not going to help us. It's not going to help us. So I appeal to colleagues in, in the political leadership that there is a solution when we engage. And since this is my new docket, I will engage as number one agenda is a human wildlife conflict. But, but if some of them continue with statements like this, isn't that now almost it's I unfortunate. Say criminal? But it's know. unfortunate. But you could, I can, I can appreciate the frustration they're undergoing, and, and as, as we, are, we, we have, we have compensation bills outstanding to almost 15 billion, that we don't have a budget for it. Uh, but people have, uh, have, have, have applied. Because they've company. lost one thing they or the other. One, one thing or, for example, almost 70% uh, of those applications is if you're beaten w by a snake, then you're compensated up to 3 million. So you say uh, you have bills of up to 15 billion. 15 billion outstanding. And that's why it has, uh, uh, since I've been taken through, it's the biggest agenda I have on my table. And we need to address it together. As a people, because we cannot, we have to delist snake bites as part of compensation. We must delist, or otherwise this country will go bankrupt. Wow. CS, after tourism, what's next for you? Some have come on this show. Yesterday, Governor Mutua was here. He's told us 2022 where he's headed. Um, what next for you? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, let me finish tourism. I have a new document that I've just started. Uh, let me achieve that one first. Uh, but definitely public service for me has been in my DNA. And I will be still around. You will still be around. Safe answer. I won't push you <laughs> further on that. <laughs> Says Najib Alala. Thank Many you. thanks Thank indeed you. Thank you. for finding time to be Thank here with us. Much. Tourism, now handling wildlife as well. And uh, we've taken time to go through some of the issues. You're watching Citizen Extra. Many thanks for staying tuned. We'll be right back.